Um, hey everyone. So for the next 15 minutes or so, I'm just going to kind of go over some of the tools and uh, components and whatnot that are available for basically getting your content onto the television through Android. Let's see if this will click for me. Which oh, it may not. Oh. Well, let me. <laughs> Alrighty, um, <laughs> there we go. Uh, we've got a couple options. So the first one I'm going to go over is Android TV, um, which is basically, it could either be a set-top box or it can be embedded in the television from the manufacturer. I'm also going to go over Google Cast, which is the technology behind Chromecast, and then a library that actually helped make that really easy to put into your Android apps. And then there's a couple other options that I'm not going to go into, such as Fire TV, Roku, uh, Apple TV, all that kind of good stuff. So there's a lot of options out there to get content onto the television. Uh, so you have three broad categories that generally your apps are going to fall into with Android TV. So the first will be media apps, which is pretty much the majority of apps that you're going to have for the television. There's also games, and then miscellaneous, which would be file browsers, torrent clients, whatever else you're going to have. Uh, so we'll start off with the media apps. So Google actually provides something called the Leanback Support Library, which gives you a whole bunch of widgets and components and whatnot that you would need for a standard UI, as well as a way to interact with the system for global search recommendations and so forth. So the first component we're going to go over is the browse fragment, which when you first open your app, up your application, um, you can bring up one of these and it provides the list of lists so you can have categories and display your content. You have the fast lane navigation drawer on the side. It also provides the search orb up in the top left corner. Uh, you can put up banners and titles and so forth just to kind of brand your application. Uh, when you do select one of these items, you can take your user to a details fragment, which will allow you to display uh, an image for that content, title, so forth, as well as various actions. So if the user wants to either buy the content or watch it, get a trailer, so forth. Uh, if they decide that they don't want to watch this item, but they do want to watch something related, there is a related row at the bottom of that screen, so you can display other items for that user. Uh, once you actually do your playback, you can basically implement it like you would with any kind of Android application. You can use ExoPlayer, or Video View, so forth. Uh, they also provide the playback overlay fragment, which allows you to have a set of controls that works really well with the D-pad controller for the Android TV. Uh, and then new and end, they also added in picture in picture. So as you can see on the overlay fragment, we have an item in the bottom corner there, um, on the right hand side. You can click that and it'll actually call back to your activities so that you can create picture in picture mode which will allow you to keep playing your content as your user browses around your application or goes to other applications within uh, their Android TV. Uh, you also have local search. So if, you have, if you're as big as like Netflix, you don't want to just put all of your content out there and let people browse. Sometimes they want to find something in particular. So you can implement the search fragment and basically they can type in something if they have a keyboard or if they want to use the D-pad on-site keyboard or you can use uh, voice recognition. So because of Android M, there was actually a voice permission that was added. So they added in the speech recognition callback. So you can basically use that without having to request speech permission from your user, which is pretty awesome. Uh, there's also the lean back preference fragment. So if you need to set up settings, it's easy to use this with the controller so you don't have to fiddle around with a whole bunch of stuff. Your user can just do what they need to do and move along. And then there is the guided step fragment, which is great for onboarding and just doing general step-by-step -step configurations. Uh, outside of your app, you can actually interact with the Android TV system. So there's Global Search, which uses a content provider and um, just general database items so that you can provide content to the system. So if you are on the home screen and your user just wants to find comedy, they can search basically any app that's available on their TV to find that content. Uh, there's also the recommendations row, which is also on the home screen. So if you provide a service with notifications, you can let your user know um, what content is new within your app, you can also uh, provide easy access to a show that they haven't finished or the next episode of a season. So if they're binge watching and then they come back to something, they can just jump right onto it. Um, let's see here. There's also the now playing card. So if you're doing audio media instead of just video media, uh, your user's not going to want to stay on the player's screen. So what they can do is they can go to any other app and to get quickly over to your content again, they can just go ahead and hit that item and get to wherever they need to be without having to find your app, get to the screen, and try to deal with all of that. 
And finally, there are live channels and new and end is the recording API. So if your content is kind of like a standard cable provider where it's just, here's the set times, this is what's playing, you can actually funnel it through this live channels app. And then now that they have the recording API, you can kind of treat it like a DVR. Um, <laughs> Uh, so next there is the games. So there's a few tools that are kind of there. There's nothing really in the Leanback support library for games, but you can kind of develop them just like you would a normal uh, Android game. So anything like Unity, Corona, whatever engine you would want to use, or if you want to just do something from scratch, you can do that as well. Um, Unity supports the D-pad controller immediately by just clicking a checkbox, which is pretty awesome. Um, and there's a game row as well as an application row on the Android TV home screen. So as long as you set this manifest flag, it'll end up showing up on that home screen in that row. So you have a general D-pad controller that a lot of users will use for games. So you have to make sure that your app will support that. So as long as you're listening for key events and motion events, you can read in those inputs and handle analog and digital inputs. Uh, there's also the second screen experience. So if you have a strategy game or a card game and you don't want everyone to see the cards and know what your next move is going to be, you can go ahead and use this. So basically the TV acts as a host and then using play services you can have people with their phones acting as clients so they can make their decisions on their phone and then have everything to show up on the screen when it's ready. Um, again, this supports Ethernet and Wi-Fi, so it's great for TV as well as just normal network. And then there's Google Play Game Services, which gives you a whole bunch of functionality out of the box for achievements, multiplayer, so forth. So if you are developing a game, this is something you're going to want to throw in. Um, so if you don't want to actually do a TV app, or if you think that it's not really worth it because most people do have Chromecast rather than TV uh, boxes, you can go ahead and use just standard Google Cast. So you have the receiver app and the sender app. So the receiver app is basically a web page that is running on the casting device and you're streaming media to that from online. And the sender app would be the actual controller. So in this case, your Android app that you have on your phone will be set up to route content to that. So one of the easiest ways to get that in there because of all the design requirements and technical requirements for connection and so forth is to use the cast companion library. Um, so you could do everything from scratch, but that sucks. So. <laughs> Uh, so a lot of UI components are available in this casting library. Uh, it also handles, again, all your connection issues. So if your user drops and they reconnect, it'll just all work for them magically, which is awesome. Uh, so it provides the routing button that you can throw into your action bar that actually handles finding casting devices on their network and getting them connected and so forth. It also provides the introduction overlay. So when your user first opens up your app, you want to let them know that casting is available just so they can use that feature because it's a great feature. So this is <laughs> out of the box. It knows exactly where your uh, casting button is, it highlights it for you, all that good stuff. And they also provide a player control activity. So when you're playing your content, your user can go through here to do all their seeking and uh, skipping, playing, pausing, all that good stuff. Uh, if your user does lock their phone, they have an automatic lock widget through media sessions that will let them just play and pause so they don't have to, again, fiddle with your app if they do need to pause it immediately if somebody comes to the door or whatever. Uh, there's the mini controller, so if they are going through your app and they're not on that player activity, then they can still control everything no matter where they are. And then if they leave your app, you still have notifications, which is great too because they can either double click that, or just single click I guess on the phone, <laughs> um, to get to that player activity and still control everything, or they can have whatever controls that you add to this notification. Uh, so if you want to know more, there's the developer documentation. I've also made three sample apps. so the First one there handles everything I talked about for Android TV and with the Cast Companion library. So if you just want to dive into code, it's all there, uh, working and whatnot. I also added in two samples there at the bottom for uh, reading in content from the, or input from the player controller, the uh, gamepad, as well as the second screen experience with Google Play services. Um, and if you want to find out more or get in contact with me, there's my Google Plus. I also write a couple times a month for Tuts Plus. And then there's this book by somebody who's all right with Android TV, if anyone's interested. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I got. Um, how are we doing on time? I probably rushed through pretty quickly. OK, yeah, any questions at all? Doing pretty good. Oh, yeah, what's up? So for that second screen, screen support feature that you mentioned, uh -huh. is that part of the lead back API? No, so that's actually part of Google Play Services. It's the nearby connections API. So basically, you can do that with uh, just phones or with the TV and the phone. It just is a really good way of setting up communication over LAN. Do you know of any um, uh, manufacturers who have started implementing Android TV? Uh, I think pretty much every Sony TV in the last year is going to start having it. So, and there's a whole bunch of other manufacturers that are starting to adopt it now too. And then I, uh, how do you how can you interact with the the, 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 the 
the data source is there. Can you, can you just interact with the rest of the HTTP server? Yep, uh, it basically works just like a normal Android app, so you can bring down your data, or if you have anything locally, you can use that as well, however you want to do that. Yep. Go back one screen, those right oh. links. Yep, go for it. Uh, any other questions? Cool beans. All righty. All right. Thanks. Awesome. Great job, Paul.